Hi, I'm Radek. I'm a developer advocate at Ceramic. And in this video, I'll show you how to make the most out of the query filtering and ordering capabilities in ComposeDB. By the end of the video, you will know how to run queries against your data, either locally or in a publicly available sandbox, create indices for specific fields in your model so that you can filter by those fields, use value and logical conditions for querying, combine multiple conditions, and then sort the returned results by specific fields. Ready? Let's go. Okay, so what are you going to need to start query filtering and ordering in ComposeDB? First, you need to have a basic understanding of GraphQL. So GraphQL looks something like this, and all the queries will be in GraphQL. So you need to know how this works, or at least need to be able to figure out what's going on in here. And second, you need an active ComposeDB environment. If you're running it yourself, make sure to install the latest versions of Ceramic CLI and ComposeDB CLI. If you're using a sandbox like you see here, then everything is done for you and the data is preloaded, so you don't need to do anything. All the links, as always, are in the description, so just go and uh, click there. But if we are not using the sandbox here, we need a model and the data that we can query and filter. You have a few options here. So the option number one is to use a simple social app that you get as an example app when you install ComposeDB with Wheel and you can learn all of that in set up your environment doc uh, in the guides or you can create a model from scratch and then add data to it or third you can work on your already existing data but yeah we need a model and the data so that we can start filtering that data in the example app that you get when you install with wheel a simple posts model looks like this. You have a body of the post, you have a created at date time, profile ID, and uh, the profile relation. And that's about it. It's good enough to capture and store data to show in a simple app, but let's make it more robust. Let's add a few new fields. Let's get it ready for filtering and sorting, and let's see what we can do with it. To be able to filter, we need to create indices for each field that you want to filter on or sort on you need to create an additional index so let's add some of these indices and let's also add a few additional fields so that it's more interesting for us to create the queries later on let's see how it looks with all the indices added with all the new fields and a full model ready for creating data and filtering and indexing. You'll notice a few new things here. The first one is this enum uh, type publication status. We know that the publication status can have only a new values. So we are listing them here and creating a new field having draft, published, or archived. So we are limiting the options of this field to only these three statuses. Once we define this, we then add it here and make it mandatory with the exclamation point. Here we are adding all the indices that we saw in the previous step, additional fields here, tag, mandatory, type string, rating, float, not mandatory, edited, shows if a field was edited, and if it was, then the date when it was last edited. So now we have a model, but we don't have much data yet that we can sort and filter. Let's take care of that. When creating a sample app and following this guide to set up your environment, to use wheel, to create a composite, there is a step to interact with your data. What it essentially does is that you are setting a local GraphQL server that then enables you to run all the queries, to see all the data, to update all the data, and to interact with the data. And this is how it looks once you finally launch it with this command. I'm going here, and this is where I will be doing all my filtering, querying, and sorting. This is my interface to my ComposedDB. Uh, to create a new item 
in GraphQL, you need to run a mutation. That's how we are adding a single item into our stream, into our ComposeDB. I went ahead and already added a bunch of those for us to be able to sort and query it. And uh, this is how you read the data. So this is a simple query just to list the last 100 items uh, that we have. And this is what is being returned. So let's quickly recap how to work with a GraphQL interface or your data on your local machine or in the sandbox. On the left in the first window is where you enter your queries. Here is how you run the queries and here where is where you get the results. If you need any variables for the query, which we will see later on, you put them here. That's about it. One, two, three, and then you see all the data. Okay, now that we know how to interact with the data and now that we have some data to interact with, let's run some queries and let's do some filtering. You can do two types of filtering. First, you can filter by value and second, you can filter by logical conditions. What does that mean? Filtering by value is based on a single field and we can do a lot with a single field. Let's have a look. In the documentation, when you go to reference and then to runtime schema, you can check here, go to filtering further down, scroll to this table. And these are all the conditions that we can filter by value. So you can check if a value is null or not. You can check if it's equal to some kind of value or not equal to a value. You can check if a value is in a list of values that you provide or if it's not present in that list of values. You can check if it's less than, less or equal to, greater than or greater or equal to a specific value. So this is filtering by value. What's filtering by logical conditions? Logical conditions is when you combine multiple filters with multiple values into one query. So we are combining them with and so that multiple need to be true or when one of those are true and also with not when it's not true. So now let's do some filtering. Let's see examples for each and every one of those and then also for logical conditions as well. So the first one, let's filter by status. So we are checking if the status is equal to draft. So this is how you create variables. Here at the top, you run your query and you specify a variable that you then show here. I prefer to run the queries this way where we have a query at the top and we have all the conditions uh, as a variable at the bottom. It's more clear what we want to return and what the conditions are, but you don't need to do it this way. If you want, you can run everything in a one query and you do it like this, that you get rid of the input variable here and also replace this input variable and provide the whole filter in here this way, just copy, paste, and to just get rid of all of those. And this way you have everything in one query, then you don't even need this, and you can run the query and get the same result. But for me, it's too much going on in one query, and I like to separate things. So this is a better way for me to see what's going on. When you run it, you get the same result as with when everything was in one query. So let's get back to our first query and the first filter. The filter is that we are running as where as a filter and we are comparing status to a draft. So it, we only want to see items that have status as draft and this is what we are showing in return. So as you can see, only the items where the status is draft are returned in the results. A very simple filter to see if a field 
is equal to something. Second is filtering by comparing to a number. We have a rating and it needs to be less than seven and a half. Let's run this and we only have two uh, where rating is less than seven and a half. Next one is comparing to a date, not a number. So something needs to be earlier than a specific date. So show me all the items, all the posts that have been created earlier than January 1st, 2023. January 2nd, so that's actually January 10th, not January 1st. And January 5th, uh, 2022, March. So only the dates before January 10th of 2023. So that's comparison by date. Something needs to be earlier than a specific date. Next, we check if something is null or not. So we only want to see items where the edited field is not empty. We are only showing the items that were edited because otherwise, if it's not edited, then this field is null. So we want to see those edited. And as you can see, these are all with dates of the last edit. Next, let's see if a field is in a list of values that we provide. So in this case, we are checking if the tag is in any of these. So if it's either decentralization or future, then we want to see that. Decentralization, future, we only see those items. But we can combine filters. So those were the simple ones. But what if we want to see something that is, for example, rating between 2.2 and 8.8. .8. We can run those in two ways. This is way number one. Way number one is to explicitly show those conditions and combine them with AND. So we have AND at the very top and then have two different conditions. So first one where rating is greater than or equal to 2.2. And then the other conditions all under the end here at the top. And then when those are combined, we get the result that is only between 2.2 and 8.8. .8. The same can be done with dates. Something should be later, like greater than or equal to, so later than January 1st, but earlier than January 31st. So we only want to see the posts from January and that's it. Sure enough, only January 2, January 5, January 10, and 15. That's it, nothing else. And the same can be done not just by one field that the rating is between 2.2 .2 and 8.8, .8, but we can combine different fields. So for example, something with the explicit and at the top, something is status is in, in draft or archived and has been created uh, before March 1st. And we have two posts. The first one is like the old post that has been archived. And the other is again, old irrelevant posts. So this is good for finding something that we maybe want to get rid of. And that's how you combine different conditions. Now that we know how to combine different conditions and getting multiple results, uh, we might want to start sorting those results. So if we get not maybe two items as a result, but 200 items, we might want them to sort by oldest date, newest date, rating from the top to bottom. Uh, we want some order in the data that we have filtered. And this is how you do it. So you introduce an additional variable here, which is sort input. So we have two variables now, input and sort input. Uh, and you add that variable here. So the, the filter and query is quite simple. We want only to see the items from 2023. So we combine this, but we also want to show them in descending order. And this is how we define that. Sort input created, can be descending or ASC for ascending. And now we only see the results from 2023 and in descending order in terms of created date. And as you can see, 
February 28, February 28, February 10, February 5, January 15, down to January 2nd. So sorting works, filtering works, now just how to make it a little bit easier to write the queries. And here are a couple of examples. So the first example to make your lives easier or your filters and queries simpler to see and understand what's going on is uh, when you look here, we see that we have multiple different conditions. So where created is greater than, less than, and where the tag is in this list, but we are not seeing and at the top. This is called implicit and uh, instead of explicit where we added that and added specific queries multiple times, here we are combining those conditions. So we have an implicit and here at the top, we are just not writing it down. And everything here is for and, and we are also having an implicit and here at the top, we're just not showing it. So this is quite easy on the ice where we see that the condition is where created is greater than and less than and also where the tag is in this list. And then we are also sorting it by created ascending now, not descending. And here as a result, we see now only the items with decentralization or announcement only from year 2023. And everything is sorted based on created ad starting from the earliest to the latest. So here it's a little easier on the eyes some people prefer to have implicit, some people prefer explicit, you can do both. Okay, so this was the last query and uh, the most complete example. So let's quickly reiterate what we can do and what's going on here. The first one is that we have an implicit and here for range filtering. The second is that we are providing an additional condition again with implicit and at the top, which we are not showing. And then we are combining all those multiple filters into one condition. Once we have that, we run the query and we sort the output by created field. It's a date field. So we are showing from the earliest to the latest in the ascending order. And that's it. You are now filtering and sorting at will. Congratulations. With the steps in this tutorial that we just went through, you can now efficiently filter and order all your data based on specific criteria, enabling you to build more robust applications. You can dive deeper into documentation for more advanced filtering. You can also jump into our community forum, participate forum, you can start asking questions there. We're always there to help you out. And with that, happy filtering and see you soon.